Nvidia just silently launched another GPU, the RTX 3056 GB. But my question is, is it any good? Well, the GPU comes around the price of $170 to $180. That means it is a sub $200 GPU, which has been lacking for an update. Because around that price range, we have old generation GPUs. If you want to buy a new one or second-hand GPUs if you want to buy a current gen but this fits the bill a new semi-current gen G because this is a 3000 series GPU unlike 4000 which is Nvidia's current generation of GPU from technical standpoint this GPU is a cut down version of a RTX 3050 not only this has less VRAM it also lacks in the core count compared to RTX 3050 also it uses less power that means most AI IB partners will make this GPU without a power connect and that is a good option for few people which I'm gonna talk later in the video and I'm gonna be the devil's advocate here this is a decent GPU not a great GPU not a hundred percent recommended GPU but what this GPU does is interesting because around this price range for the first time you'll be able to use exclusive RTX feature with this GPU like DLSS and all sort of things now Ray tracing, I won't be counting ray tracing because I'm, sh I'm I'm gonna be sure the ray tracing performance isn't gonna be good because the RTX 3050 80 gigabytes doesn't have a good ray tracing performance to begin with. But I was the one who have been shouting out of his lungs saying that we need a good GPU, we need a good GPU. Is it a good GPU? Well, it performs 20% less or the performance is 20% less compared to the RTX 3050 8GB. Not a lot of people are talking about this GPU. Few reviewers and few people tested this GPU and according to those numbers, this GPU in 1080p can deliver you sub 60 fps in most modern titles not 60 fps all the times but a sub around 50 to 60 fps in most games at 1080p medium to low settings at high settings the performance is going to decrease again but you can use dlss 3.5 using this to achieve more frame rates and to be honest i'm gonna make a video about dlss later down the road i love to hate dlss a lot but i also agree that this is a pretty good feature because it kind of gives you free performance and free boost if you have the right hardware and this is that right hardware around that price the 170 180 dollar range the options you had was gtx 16 series and if you bought those gpus then you don't have the capability to use dlss yes you can use fsr but it's not there in terms of dlss 3.5 and because this is a rtx series gpu you can use dlss 3.5 and i think that is the usp of this gpu it performs not that good and at the same time it doesn't perform that bad if we compare it it's competitive at few areas at few areas it falls behind but if we compare it to rx 6600 or rtx 3050 it do it doesn't look that good but for a lot of people who don't have the budget but they want to get into pc gaming or a lot of people young people who want to get into pc building or want to buy their new pc well now you have an option rather than going with a rtx sorry a gtx 1650 you can go with a rtx 3050 where you're gonna get nvidia's novelty feature which can help in your pc's performance that is this gpu's offering only offering the performance it's lackluster it's not that great honestly but it's doable because with this GPU, you can build $350, $400 PC and you can play 1080p games. You can play most modern games in 1080p because you have DLSS. A lot of games which were borderline playable can be smoothly playable because of this GPU. And not only for those people who are building the first PC or have a budget constraint, it's a good option for a lot of people who are building small home theater PC. I know a lot of people who want to build a home theater PC and for them, it's a good option. You don't need an extra power connector. You don't, it's a not a power hungry GPU, so you don't need a big PSU to run it. And if you cannot spend more than 170 or 180 dollars 
for a GPU, then this is a good option. And if you can, then I would suggest you the RX 6600 is a far better option than this one. But again, if you don't have that kind of money and you want to build your first PC or you want to upgrade from not having a GPU playing on integrated Intel G GPU to a dedicated GPU, this is a good option. Rather than buying a 1650, you can go with this option and it can deliver you good performance 1080p for one or two years, save up some money, then buy a expensive GPU or use this GPU until it comes down to its knees. But before buying this GPU, do you wanna know how your GPU works? Well, you can check this video right here. And if you wanna subscribe to the channel, which I will suggest you, you do, do it by here. And that's Akash, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.